We're going to be looking at a verse of scripture in the Old Testament, Jeremiah chapter 6. Uh, I want to use this for the basis of our thoughts tonight. We continue with our subject of living as a Christian. We're kind of coming to the end of that for our studies uh, here in January and February of this year. Uh, it's a uh, it's a subject that we just don't uh, fully exhaust. There's always plenty that we can continue to look at, and as the Lord gives us the opportunity in the future, we'll be sharing more things uh, regarding living as a Christian and uh, receiving the engrafted Word of God into our hearts, which is our theme for 2024. In verse 16 of Jeremiah 6, he says these words, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But the response of the people is a sad one. But they said, We will not walk therein. Very, very sad, that last sentence there, isn't it? <clears throat> I'd like to speak to you tonight on the thought of living the Christian life with a peace of mind, a comforting peace of mind. What a joy it is to be able to do that. And I think from this verse of Scripture, we can find out how to do that. Let me kind of set the stage for us real briefly in regard to what's taking place here. Jeremiah, in chapter 1, receives God's call and the anointing of the Lord is placed upon him, <clears throat> his ordination, so to speak, we might say, takes place and he begins to minister and he is ministering in a time when uh, Judah, the people of Judah are living in a backslidden condition. Verses 13 and 15 of this sixth chapter give us a little bit of insight. And if you read chapters 1 through 6, you'll get additional insights into what was taking place. But in verse 13, for example, he says, For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. I consider that to be a pretty sad commentary. In verse 15, were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Judah was in dire straits. Jeremiah knew that they were in dire straits. While we have the understanding given to us of what was taking place here in verses 13 and 15 of chapter 6, if we back up following the installation, so to speak, or the ordination of Jeremiah, we find that in chapter 2, verse 1, he declares his first message, probably the very first message that he declared after his call by the Lord God. And that message continues on up through chapter 3, verse 5. And then we move from verse 5 to verse 6 of chapter 3. And we have his second message, which follows on the heels of the first one. I do not know how much time there was between the two, maybe not much. As far as the way it is written here in the scriptures, it would lead us to think that there was probably not a whole lot of time in between. And so in verse 6 of chapter 3, he begins his second message, and it goes through verse 30 of our current chapter here in chapter 6. So the wording of verse 16 is included in this, and in my way of thinking, it is 
a very challenging uh, bit of wording that he gives here to the people of Judah. Uh, he wants them to turn from their uh, waywardness and turn to the Lord and get things on track and move in the right direction and live the way they should. And I consider these to be very strong words, very challenging words that he gives here in verse 16. Three commands are stated. We're going to briefly look at each of those commands. And then finally, tonight, I want us to look briefly at what happens if the commands that are given are obeyed. And I think you will really appreciate the result of what Jeremiah has to say here. He makes it clear that if these three commands are uh, obeyed, then one can find rest for their soul. Now, the word rest as used there is interesting. It's not talking about laying down or reclining, so to speak, in a recliner, or laying down on the sofa, or going to bed and getting that kind of rest. We talked about rest uh, a bit earlier in the month of uh, February and the need for rest. This is a different rest. The word rest here, as used in this passage, comes from a Hebrew word which means to have relief from anything that is distressing or tiring or to have peace of mind. And that's the definition that I zero in on and use in our title tonight. Let's live our lives as uh, Christians in 2024 so as to be able to have peace of mind always. Don't you like it when you have peace of mind? Yay. I do. I really like the wonderful peace that God gives. And so let's think about how we can live our lives and have that kind of peace of mind based on what Jeremiah has to say here in his challenge in verse 16. Let's see what we need to do. His first challenge is, Stand ye in the ways and see. Stand ye in the ways and see. Now, Jeremiah's challenge is uh, one of saying to the people of Judah at that time, get out there and get in the position where you will be able to see what's happening in the many ways that people find themselves traveling. Look at how they are living. Look at how they are uh, carrying out their life from day to day. We would do well to do the same uh, as members of the body of Christ today. We. Uh, need to stand in the ways and see. We need to look at where people are traveling and see what's going on around us. People have the opportunity to travel on whatever road they choose. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. God has given mankind the opportunity to make his or her choice to do what they would like to do. Jeremiah says to Judah, get out there where the people are traveling and where they're moving and look at how they're going and how they're walking and what they are doing in, with their lives, the choices that they have made. Look at those choices. Do those roads of choice, whenever you look at the choices that people have made, in the way that Jeremiah would have been saying this to uh, the people of Judah, he would have been saying, does the choice that you see the majority of people making out there that are traveling in all these different ways that they're traveling, 
increase or does it decrease the amount of stress or distress that they are having in their lives? If we stand in the ways today and see how people are traveling <coughs> and the choices that they are making, <coughs> what do you think the answer to that question would be? Are we seeing less distress or are we seeing more distress? <coughs> in terms of how people are traveling today. I would submit to you that we're seeing more stress, we're seeing more distress, we're seeing much, much more discomfort, much, much more unhappiness, lack of peace, and it's all because of choices that people are making and the journey or the path that they have chosen that they themselves have made the decision to travel down. Do those roads of choice which use the products of a sinful society bring any kind of effective relief? <laughs> Jeremiah said to the people of Judah, as you look at where people are traveling based upon the choices that they have made, do you see people who look like they're traveling with relief on their face or are they burdened down with something? Uh, do we see people traveling today with relief on their face and a smile on their face for the most part of once in a while? Yes, but not all the time, right? Uh, everybody's in a hurry. Can't get there fast enough. Old fellow like me got to get out of the way and let the younger ones go because they're traveling so fast and they're stressed to the nth degree. That's how people are traveling these days, under high, a high degree of stress. And they seek to find relief through the products that this sinful society has to offer. But most of those products that the society has to offer are sinful products. And let me tell you tonight, beloved, just as Jeremiah would have said to the people of Judah back in that day, you'll see that those people find pleasure every once in a while in sinful activities, but it don't last. And we will see people who are traveling on various paths in our world, and they think they're having a good time. They think that things are going their way and that the products of this sinful society are exactly what they need but I remind all of us of what the Bible says. There is pleasure in sin for a season. You got it. A short period of time. I want to talk about something that gives me peace of mind for the long duration. How about you? I want to walk in the path that gives me a peace of mind for a long time. And Jer Jeremiah wanted the people of Judah to walk that way. And so the second thing he said is, ask for the old paths. Ask for the old paths. Now, back in that day, that would have been a good thing to do. Jeremiah was saying unto the people of Judah that you need to ask for the paths that God ordained that your forefathers my forefathers felt were the right paths to travel in. And we know that they traveled in those paths and they were very successful in traveling in those paths. And we need to look at those paths and, and ask for them to be returned to us now, says Jeremiah. I would say to us today in 2024, that we would do well to ask for the old paths. That won't be a popular message in this world, but I, I still will say it. I'll still stand right where I stand, believing that the old paths are the best. The old fashioned way is the best way. Mm -hmm. I believe it with all of my heart. Haven't changed in that a bit. <clears throat> the old paths are the paths that were ordained by God for mankind, past, present, and future. 
They are the paths that have been tried many, many times over. And they have been proven to be right time and time and time again. And they're still being proven to be right tonight in 2024. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what the world says, regardless of what uh, many, many who say they are uh, men of God, and servants of the Lord and so forth. Contrary to what many are saying, I'm telling you folks, there are many paths that are being traveled out there. If you get out there and you look and you watch, and there's many doctrines that are being propagated that are not biblical in nature. There's many paths that are being traveled that are not the old paths that were ordained by God. Many, many paths not ordained by God. So Jeremiah says, ask for the old paths. Why? Why ask for the old paths? Because they alone, he says here, will be the good way. Where is the good way is the word that he uses here. The old paths are the good way. Now, a path may be old, but it may not be good. Is that true? That's very true. Path may be old, but it may not be good. What Jeremiah is saying to the people of Judah and what I would say to people today is we need to get on the right path. The old path, the ancient path ordained by God because it is still good. It is old, but it's still good. It has not worn itself out it's still a good path to, to walk in if we will find ourselves doing it. Jeremiah says, ask for it. God's path may be old, but can I say this to us tonight in my way of thinking? No other way will ever beat it. That's right. No other way will ever beat it. Amen. Amen. I believe that fully with all of my heart. How should we ask? Well, let me give us some suggestions on how we should ask for the old past. Beginning with the fact that we need to ask God for direction. And that's what Jeremiah wanted the people of Judah to do, was to turn their attention back to God and seek God for the proper direction that they needed in their lives and get back on the right track. We need to be on the right track. I've talked about that already in the month of February, how we need to stay on the right track. I mentioned that, I believe it was Sunday, that we need to be on the right track, stay on the right track. So we need to find ourselves as we live in 2024, asking God for direction. I've lived all these years, but I don't know everything I need to know. I don't know everything I need to know about what I need to do always. Even though I've achieved the age that I've achieved and learned a lot of things and had many different experiences, but I'm still learning every single day and he's still working on me. He's the potter, I'm the clay. He's still molding me each and every day. Poet and didn't know it. It all came, to, it all came together right there. Uh, but we need to ask God for direction. If any man lack wisdom, what did James say? Let him ask of the Lord. Let him ask of the Lord. So that's what we need to do. Ask of the Lord. Number two, we need to search the scriptures. That's the exact words of Jesus found in John 5, verse 39. Search the scriptures, said Jesus, for in them... You think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. The scriptures tell us all we need to know about Christ. Judah would have done well to have been searching the scriptures available to them at that, that particular time and listening to the voice of the prophets that had been speaking to them because there were other contemporaries of Jeremiah that were on the, the, the scene giving 
the mind of God to the people. So Judah was without excuse in regard to what she was doing and not living for the Lord. There were many that were sharing the right things for her to do, and yet she chose not to do them as we just read in verse 15 of this passage a few minutes ago. For you and me today, we need to ask the Lord for direction. We need to search the scriptures. We need to study to show ourselves approved unto God through the searching of the scripture. And we need to associate with God-fearing, dedicated members of the body of Christ and share our thoughts with one another and study with one another, search the scriptures with one another, and let the Lord lead and guide us in understanding how it is that we're supposed to live. Solomon said in Proverbs 13, verse 20, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise. So it does matter the company we keep, doesn't it? It matters. Ask for the old paths. Search for the right people to walk with you and to associate with. Search the scriptures. Ask God for direction. Study his word and put it into practice. Which is the third thing Jeremiah said here. Walk therein. Just very simply stated. Walk therein. Jeremiah's instruction to Judah uh, in my words would be something like this. Now, Judah, listen to me. Sounds, it sounds like uh, someone that I hear on the radio uh, quite often saying, now listen to me. You may know who that is. I didn't call any names, but you know, you know what I'm talking about, probably. Jeremiah is saying, now listen to me. He says, what I'm trying to tell you is Ask for the old paths. Look at how people are traveling and what they're doing and the roads that they are taking and so forth. And get on the right path. Remain on the right path and follow it as long as you live. Be a consistent follower of traveling the right path each and every day. And why would he say that? And why would I say that to us today? I would say that to us today because the path that the Lord would have us to walk on is absolutely the straightest path that we can ever be on. It's the straightest path that we can ever be on. It is the most d direct route that we can take from earth to glory. Amen? Amen. Why would we want to get on other paths and go in different directions. Whenever our desire is to move from here, whenever our time comes to the other side to be with, uh, to be with the Lord, to be in his presence. I want the most direct path, don't you? Jeremiah wanted the most direct path for the people of Judah to walk in during that particular time. So should we want the most direct path, the straightest path, because it will be the safest path. I promise you that if we'll walk the right path for the Lord, if we'll walk therein, as, as Jeremiah said here, we'll always be safe. Doesn't mean we won't have problems. It doesn't mean there won't be some hard places. It doesn't mean that there won't be challenges and difficulties that we encounter sometimes, but it will be the safest path that we can ever walk in. It will be the most pleasant path with the most joy that can ever be found anywhere that's lasting. Pleasantries that last not pleasures of sin that are for a season, and then whenever they end, there is tremendous heartache, heartbreak, sadness, grief, all those kind of things that accompany that. If we walk in the right path, always, as we live our life as a Christian, it will be pleasant for us 
not all parts of the Christian life, as I've just said, are always pleasant. There's hard places. But the Lord never leaves us nor forsakes us, does he? He's always with us. He'll provide for us all the way to the end. We just have to trust him. So, number four, and finally, the reward for following Jeremiah's instructions is nothing short of amazing in my mind. He says, ye shall find rest for your souls. Ye shall find rest for your souls. Listen, Judah, if you will hear me, and if you will stand in the ways and see what's happening all around you and the difficulties that are being encountered, and you'll ask for the old paths, and you'll walk in those paths and stay in them day in and day out, consistently walk in those paths, then you'll find rest for your souls. You'll find rest for your souls. And what did I tell you that word rest means? Peace of mind. So what Jeremiah is saying is you'll find peace of mind if you'll walk like this. You will find peace of mind. Peace of mind if you'll walk like this. You'll experience that. In what ways is rest or peace of mind experienced? Let me give, give you five ways right quick. I won't deal with them long. The way of pardon through atonement made by Jesus Christ gives rest to our conscience. The atonement of Christ at Calvary we're going to be celebrating that here in the next few weeks as we celebrate Easter. But what a wonderful, wonderful thing for us to do, to celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He made atonement for our sin at the cross of Calvary. Our sin brings to our hearts sorrow, guilt, and it creates burdens in our life. But when we know that we have been pardoned through the atoning work of the Lord Jesus Christ, then we no longer have that guilt. We no longer carry those burdens. We no longer have a guilty look on our face because after all, is it not true? A guilty conscience shows itself, right? Daddy and Mama used to tell me whenever I was a boy growing up, and I've told you this before, Joe, you better tell me the truth. All I've got to do is look in your face and I can tell whether you are or whether you're not. And you see, I never could tell them a lie because I knew if I did, it was going to show because my face is going to turn red. I'm fair skinned. And my heart was going to start beating like this real fast. And a whole lot of things were going to take place, you know, because I would be guilty. I would be guilty. Number two, the way of believing the Word of God as a little child gives rest to one's understanding. You see, acceptance of truth and acceptance of the fact of what Christ did for us at Calvary increases our understanding exponentially. And yet a lot of people say, I don't get it. I had a friend years ago that I witnessed to. We went to Lake Norman one day to work on his boat down there and we came back to Winston-Salem. I witnessed to him going down there and coming back. I witnessed to him at other times. And I never will forget, he was an engineer by training professional engineer and he looked at me and he said joe let me tell you something i understand everything that you are saying i know what you're talking about but he said i'm an engineer by training and until i can make it all work out it just cannot come together for me i just it just cannot be as simple as you say it is. And I remember looking at him and I said, called him by name and I said, it's every bit as simple as what I'm telling you. He said, well, I hope one of these days, if it's a, God's will for me, that I'll understand it. 
until then, until I can understand it like you're talking about. It just doesn't work for me. One day I was out of my office and I came in and it was a big handwritten note on, on the top of my desk and I looked at it and it was signed by him at the bottom. And I quickly read the note and it said something to this effect. Joe, I just want to stop by and let you know, I'm sorry that I missed you, but I got saved here recently and he said it was every bit as simple as you said it was. <laughs> I said, amen. Amen. We have to accept it as a little child. We try to make it hard and complicated, but we don't need to make it hard and complicated. It's just as simple as the Bible says it is. If thou shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Just that simple. Acceptance of truth and fact. Boy, that increased his understanding real quickly, and he let me know it. He understood it. Number three, the way of trusting our affairs to God gives us rest in our mind, doesn't it? Rest in our mind. We know that God always works out everything for our good and His glory. Or do we? Do we know that? That He always works out everything for our good and for His glory? I believe he does. I really do. You see, when he is trusted, when we just turn everything over to him and we trust him, then uncertainty and worry are removed. We don't have to worry anymore. Number four, the way of obedience to God's commands gives rest to the soul. You know why? When we are obedient to the commands of the Lord, we're not worried about being disciplined. The Bible says that God chastens his children, right? Just as an earthly father chastens his children, so does the heavenly father chasten those whom he loves because he wants them to be obedient. As a child, I never feared discipline from my parents as long as I was obeying. Whenever I was in disobedience, then I had fear. As a child of God, as long as I'm obeying, I don't fear. But if I were to step out of line and do something that I know is forbidden for me to do in the Scripture, I'd start looking up pretty quick once I realized it. Number five, the way of communion with God, the old path, the way of communion with God gives rest to one's innermost being. That's our heart, our innermost being. And you know why our innermost being has rest whenever we have fellowship and communion with God? It's because we're experiencing joy. We're experiencing peace. We're experiencing comfort. I, I found myself this afternoon, just as I have on so many occasions, just so overwhelmed and, and so thankful. I struggled really, really hard with this lesson for tonight until this afternoon and suddenly the Lord just opened it up and I got so excited I couldn't hardly wait to get here to share it with you. It's wonderful whenever that happens because God just came in and started filling my innermost being and just warmed my heart same thing happened with this past Sunday's message. I really struggled with that message up until Saturday evening and the Lord just kind of brought it all into focus and said, okay, son, here's the way. It, here's how you need to bring it down. I'm telling you, that kind of fellowship with God, I wouldn't take anything in the world for. Not to mention so many other things that we experience what great ways to experience comforting peace of mind in 2024. Walk in the ways and see. Ask for the old paths where is the good way and walk in them. Then we'll have peace of mind as we live our life this year. Thank you, Father, for our time together. What a joy to look into your word and what a joy it is to share it with 
these wonderful people who desire so much to grow in you and grow in your word and in understanding of your word. I sure am thankful for each one who comes, the faithfulness of all to share with us, the comments that are shared with us from time to time. All glory is to be given to you. All praise is to be given unto you. May each of us be able to live our Christian journey in 2024 with a wonderful peace of mind, a comforting peace of mind each and every day. And to you be the glory given for all that is done, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.